Hi everyone, welcome to Bunny Designs. I thought I would make um, a video about how I made my little book of watercolours. So I've got quite a few things in here. I've got Derwent watercolour pencils, Derwent ink tense pencils, 72. I've got about 120, I think, uh, near colour twos because I've got a vintage set of these unusual silvers and golds. I've got I think there's about 40 or 50 um, Derwent um, Peerless. Um, I've got a set of these um, Swiss colours. I uh, don't know what they're called. It's this set, which has got Derwent watercolour pencils. It's got Swiss colour pencils and it's got the Prisma watercolour pencils and it took me hours and hours to put these to mix these three sets up together so I've decided that um, for my daughter's birthday present in May I'm going to take these um, out take my original set now I've had these 20 odd years maybe more 30 years maybe even more um, I've had my original set a long time. And if you see them and they're this turquoise green, they are a vintage set. But the strip is a millimetre more. So I think they're a bit thicker, these. And they're a slightly bit creamier. Uh, but the new set is in uh, blue. And I do have a set of those. Um, so I'm going to give um, my daughter these watercolours here. Um, and I did sharpen them with um, a a blade uh, but the only time I've used them really I think I did a quick demo years and years ago but most of them are used with the to make this book so some of them have just got a tiny bit missing off them um, so these are the colors of the Swiss uh, uh, Swiss color by Karen Dash which are water-based because they've got a picture of a water brush on them and the Prismacolor. Um, so I've got all these and I say it took me a long time to put them in order um, and there are some lovely colours that I probably haven't got. Um, then I've got my uh, my um, Ganzai Tambi watercolours in puddles which I made and I will be making another video of those. Um, I've also got these which are drying, they're almost dry. The red one will always be tacky, these two I think will always be tacky, but all the other ones have dried. And I've put them on the postcard, uh, watercolour postcard, because I don't want them to bend. If they bend, they will crack. So that's why I've put them on there. So they will be going in my little book. I'm hoping to get a thousand squares of colour which will be 10,000 colours because each each puddle of colour, each square of colour will give me at least 10 shades of that main colour. Uh, so I filled this book out here. So the original one was in this photo album here and I still like that one because it was the easiest to make. I still liked it. It's my fave. Um, and one of the other things I was going to do is to pull this one out and put it in this one. Um, but I think I'm going to keep this one this size. I'll probably do that again because this one is a bit too chunky and I don't like this. And I'm going to have to bend this in the middle to make it rounded because every time I hold it, it digs into me. So there's a reason I don't like this big one. Um, and I did have a bobble to put on today, but I just wedged that under there. So we've got the photo album. Now it works best with this photo album because it's easy to put these cheap photocopy paper sleeves in and then we add the colors. So this was the original one. And if you notice, I have two squares on these. And the idea was that if I use more of one color, I could rip this off and I could replace it without wasting all the other color. But what happened was this is extra wet strength and it doesn't matter how many times I've used this, this is about five or six years old. Um, I can still, you see, it's been been revamped and revamped. If I 
it's been wet and it dries. As long as you don't do it while it's wet and you allow it to dry, like here, um, that's fine. So, um, th as I said, this is one of my original one where I kind of put extra pages in. Um, so, how it works in a normal, normal few colours is we have two pieces of photocopy paper. Of course, I don't have two pieces of photocopy paper. Um, I have put this in a bot in a in a colour book for my daughter. So I'm going to fill it with. I'm going to give her that one as well. But I'm going to give. I'm going to fill it with. Um, some other colours for her. I've got some squares of the peerless because she loves really bright colours. Um, so I'm going to fill that for her and then that's going to be her birthday present in May. And she does a lot of sketching and a lot of watercolours. So she'll like these really vibrant colours and she'll also like the Derwent watercolour pencils as well. Um, probably going to put the Derwent ink tents in as well. So you can use i picked this particular photo album up it's a vintage one um, now i haven't cut this one up this is one that's not cut up so instead of folding the pages this way we're going to have to fold them the other way slide that into here and then have the flap on the outside now, you can't put colour underneath because you'd have to do this every time you wanted to use it. Flip it up and flip it and flip it up and flip it. And that's not the idea of this book. This, the idea of this book is that you just flip it open like this and you pick the colour, touch and go. You can use it for sketching, but you can't use it if you're going to go outside for a huge watercolour because you, you'll wet your pages too much. So even though they stand quite a bit... So I have a little, a little, another different one, but I'm going to use this one. So this is a Paper Chase photo album, uh, which is 24, holds 24 photographs, six by four. Oh, I hello, Rain Chain. Welcome to Bunny Designs. Um, these are £1.50. Um, originally, I bought six of the other ones thinking that they were the same, but they're not. Costs, you will find this is so easy to do. Um, we get, and I better go get some photocopy paper. I've got some pages here which I may as well use actually. So I've got some photocopy paper. Now this is a little bit thicker than the normal one, but it's it'll do fine. It's got creased, so I can't use it anyway. So you want cheap photocopy paper for this bit to make the pages. But when we come to put colour on, you've got to have acid-free 140 GSM extra wet strength. And this is Sea White of Brighton. 40 pages, 20 sheets. And the thing with this is they're in 99p. If you get the A4 size, they're 199 and this has been sized. It's been coated so you can use it a little bit wetter than an ordinary sketchbook. But that means that if you make your squares from your, your colour books, like this one, you can wet it and then you can scratch more colour over the top and then you can use the colour and then as long as you let it dry for a couple of days, you can scratch colour over the top um, and it's, it's revamped. And you can use them over. I've done these about six times, I think, these particular pencils, these ink tens. In fact, I might give this to my daughter, actually, because it's already done. I'll probably cut them up and put them in colour order because I don't know why they end up in pickled order, but they are. Um, and there's my violet, my famous violet. <laughs> they sent me a brown in the set instead of a violet. Um, and the thing is with these is they're... Now, I had cheated a bit and cut extra plastic from the polyviews, um, but you don't need to do that. Get rid of that one and that one. So that the actual page 
is photocopy paper. Now this one, I've, um, I've put, as I put this extra layer in. So what happens is we put, we put this one in. Oh, I can't do that one, guys. Sorry, my hands aren't working very well because I've been, I've been doing quite a lot of work with them. So we make the page, we flip it. So that means that we've got plastic, we've got colour, we've got colour, we've got plastic. And then what we do is we turn it over and we put another one in here. And what that does, even though that's photocopy paper, um, forget that plastic, we've got the plastic there, colour, and we've got plastic so then we turn now i put extra ones in because i had extra colors so i would then put that there and i would then glue this uh, stick it with sellotape to there and i don't want to do it because it's um it's a double page i've got a single page somewhere somewhere i've got a single page But you stick that and then you've got so you've got color, plastic, color and you've got plastic and then you've got plastic. Then you turn that one over. So you're not using this pocket at this side. We're only using the pockets at this side. And then you put this one in here. I think I've got some more color somewhere. Like so. So we've got plastic, colour, colour, plastic. So this is the paper, this is the page. And then we cut our squares up and we attach them in colour order. And we make uh, a colour guide. And we, we name it. And that's how we make the colour pages. Now the first one, as I said, I made the square separate but what you can do uh, and these are these are not particularly in order but these are the ink tents as well is make bigger squares um, and I made big squares and so you take up I think it's 12 pages of the ink tents um, there's 24 graphite tint that's in there as well that's graphite tint so this is ink tents so you've got one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because six twelves are seventy-two. So we've got, and we've got twelve pages here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why have I only got ten? That's sixty. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder where my others are. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I think these squares are big enough, and you see where they've been used. All you do is you get the pencil. So these are Derwent watercolour pencils. As I say, I'm going to take these out. So Let's look for a blue. So this is uh, 45 mineral green. So today I've used it, so it's taken a bit of a battery. Normally they last you a, quite a while, but I used a lot of one colour. Some of these aren't being touched. So I can take the um, 45 mineral green. So it's mi um, mineral green, 45. So I can scratch over here. Well, this is where it hurts your hands a bit, but and scratch over here. You normally get about three layers before you start to get dust. My hands don't work particularly well, and now that's revamped, it's recolored now. So I put that back. 
and I don't actually normally use the pencils, although I am going to be using them more because they are a professional watercolour. And if I could only have those, I would have them. So I'm going to start using them as a watercolour. Um, so what else we've got? We've got Cedar Green 49. I've got 40, oh, 49 cedar green. What's this? 49 sap green. I've got number 50, is, but that's cedar green. So I've obviously made a boo boo. Um, and again, you can see a scratch over there. And they last quite well. Now, I think when I made this, I think I didn't use extra wet strength because. If I show you on this one, um, they really do revamp. So I'm going to make it with extra wet strength. And as I take these out, I'm going to put them in a folder, which I have got handy. <laughs> I did have handy. Because I'm going to give these to my daughter for her birthday together with this, this set. Because I've... I don't use these and it did I say this took me a long time to put all these in color order. They're very similar in in um in consistency and they're very similar but I do prefer my Derwent's. Um so I won't be using the Prisma watercolors. I've got a set of 36 and I think I've got 36 Swiss ones as well. So I'm going to take these out. I'm going to leave them in colour order and I'm going to be putting them into the Derwen art bag pages, which I have quite a few and I can't seem to get to. And they're not, it. there isn't a name, on, there's a name on these, but the Swiss ones, they don't have a name. So I need to keep them in order um, so that she knows the order of, that they are in the colour binder, they are in the book. Um, but I can actually make that book today. So we don't have to think about that. So we'll get rid of this. So this one is for me and this one is to go in for my Bible journaling and my fake, my faux Benici. So I've taken the back off, taken the front off, get rid of that. Um, so the first job is to make the pages. So I don't think I want to make the pages any any bigger than these. The other ones were smaller, but this to me is the perfect size. And it also allows me to do, it. as I say, it took two goes to get this. It also allows me to leave the front page where I used to have this. So that was stuck to there. And then I had the yellows and the oranges. And then I would have the reds and the pinky reds, the blues and the turquoises. I think those two blues are wrong, actually. I think that won't, those purples want to go there. So, um, Again, that's got 29 to it, and then I've got 35. So for some reason, they've got out of sync. So I'm pretty sure that if I had that yellow one on the first page, then I would have I would have those and reds, and then I would have pinks and purples. But I much prefer to see these colours together, especially when you get to the greens and the browns, and then I've got the light browns and dark browns. So I think I'm going to hopefully have them in a very good colour order so you, you can flip them and have them together. So the first job, we found this Polly Pocket and you don't want to be cutting. Uh, it won't work with acetate for the simple reason is these would be sharp and they're not. And if it's not nice, you're not going to use it. Now, I've obviously messed about with these papers, but as soon as it's photocopy paper, it's not going to do any harm to start again. So we've got our paper chase, um, our paper chase photo album, and we've got our photocopy paper. Now, what we do with our photocopy paper, I think I'm just going to move that for the 
time being because it's going to get on my nerves. So normally to get an A5, we would fold it this way. So again, we want it fairly neat. That's A5, but we don't want that. Our book is opening like this. So what we now need to do is to fold it like this. And you can use a metal ruler or a bone folder. And I've got hundreds and I can't find one. So I want it there. So I'm going to put this. I haven't used this for a while guys so mind your fingers i think i've actually measured it yeah i've measured half so i've got a little line on here scribble line and that means if you see your crease should be there it's right so that's right and then we hold that down and lo and behold we have our page so this particular one we want uh, two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we want thirteen well we're going to end up with fourteen so i'll just shut that down because it's a bit dangerous so what we need to do now is we've got a cut side and we've got a neat side and because it's not too bad actually we don't have to if you are going to and you see that fits in perfectly because that a is an a6 and a6 is four by five so i can have some color on here it's protected by that i can have color on here it's protected by that so i'm going to flip it over i'm not going to use this side but i'm going to use this side and the reason for that is We'll put one in here. And again, if you have a rough cut bottom, then put, put the, the rough bit to the bottom. It doesn't matter which way around it is. So I've got plastic and I'm going to put colour. I've got colour and I've got plastic. So that's quite good. Now, I was a bit greedy with mine and I... I had the page. Oop, if I can get it out, come out. I had the page, but I also stuck a bit of plastic. So that meant I'll put that one in the next one. So I'll put that one in here. So I've got plastic, colour, colour, the plastic I've inserted. I've then got another colour, the plastic, another colour and the plastic. So I've doubled my space. Now, my spine got very thick and I had to break, I had to bend it. And I probably can't do it now because I did this about six years ago. I bent this so that instead of having a gap here these plastic were at the end of this plastic uh, the other thing i did was the end of this plastic here i put a slip of paper with the the label so i knew that side was going to be ink tense this side was going to be ink tense, but then when I got to the Derwent watercolour pencils, I would have ink tense on that side, Derwent watercolour pencils on that side. But that's because I have 
and I have to redo this one. I've got hundreds of different um, colors. Oh, hi, Gina. Welcome to Bunny Designs. Anybody else popping in? So I'm not going to do that with this one. So I'm going to take this out. This is my original one that I made years ago. And then I found this lovely photo album and it's the best one. So I've got the paper chase here. You can just see it says paper chase. These are £1.50 and they are the best. These are £3.50. And I don't know if I've got the sticker on this one. Now I've taken it off. Um, you can get a lot more colours in, but you have to you have to re evaluate how you want the orientation of your pages because these are side facing so it's a bit more difficult for that but the best one is this one and i think possibly one another way to go is to I mean because these are one pound 50 is to have these lined up on your desk one says ink tents one says dermot watercolor pencils you could have another one that said um um Karen Dash near color twos and so you would just pull the one out you wanted and then you put it back because quite a few times especially bible page journaling I flipped from my watercolor pencils to my ink tens and ink tens pencils go through bible pages um so that's inspired me to make another one in fact, I'm probably going to make two because I want one to fit in my faux Benici, which I've managed to put into this Franklin Covey. Um, it's got a two inch ring binder, um, which I am using. <laughs> so I'll put it, oh, I think I took it to the other side. So this is my 1,200 page faux Benici. And it's a combination of thin layout paper and squared paper. Um, and I think I've got 20, 20 sheets, but it's quite thick. It's about two inches. Um, but I want to, in here to put my Derwent watercolour pencils um, travel book in here. And it's a complete system. I'll have a dirt watercolor brush and my uh, rotoring isograph rotoring pen. Um, and this is a complete system. There's some stencils, there's rulers, there's a few little stencils there. I just need this, and it's a complete system. Um, but I did a couple of times, I went over, I forgot where it is now, here. Um, and it shows through a bit more than I like because. I went on to the ink tents. So it's a good idea to keep on the the watercolour pages. I think I did that on this one as well, actually. So it's a good idea to have them separate. Although I do love, when I used to go to model railway shows, I did love the fact that I had um, 630, 40 squares of colour. That was 6,000 colours because each square, because they are very good quality water-based products, gives about 10 shades. So we've got our photocopy paper. We've got our cutter. We know we just want to make easy, easy pages. We don't have to resize. And that's £1.50. This is 99p. But get a bigger one. Get a one for one ninety nine. And it's got to be extra wet strength. That's the key. That's the key. Extra wet strength. Is that going to focus? Let's see if I can do this. That's the key. Extra wet strength because it's been coated. Oh, Gina, did you mean, um, beg your pardon, I did, I've just been, I've, <laughs> the video before this, or earlier today live, I've done a four hour video of 
it's on the floor because it weighs a ton. Um, I bought, um, it must have been quite a few years ago. Um, these are like a mirror. The mirrored. Um, and the girls never used them. And this one's be been bent in half. Um, and they've obviously passed it back to me. So it was just a cheapy frame that I picked up from the for the kids to do with things. Um, and the the wonderful thing about this, sorry, upside down. I may, I may have to remember that that means the top. Um, I don't know where I picked these up from, but I don't think they were very expensive but i would think they're very expensive now somewhere i've got um don't even know what it says on it doesn't on that one on this one it does it's got i don't know where i got these from um i've had these years and never used them and i was thinking the other day i wonder if they'd go in that little pocket and they do um, I use this for lines and I use this. These are, again, these stencils that were my daughter's and they've given me about 20 back because there's two years between them. If I bought one something, I bought the other one. Um, just bear with me. So I'm going to keep that one in because I use that for my Fobonichi for the dates um is that what you meant gina the that that one there so oh, i caught myself on something i cut my finger so these little so these are the squares and this is my this is my doodle this is my i, I designed this in fact i've actually got it next to me um but the teardrop one is this one, is it? Is that the teardrop one? This, you won't believe, is the middle of the butterfly. So always look at your stencils because the way I did this one was I drew around it and then I put the butterfly in the middle and then I put, I looked at these three and I thought, oh, that, that looks like it's going in a corner. So if you look, um, it might be that one, actually. If you can see that one. Um, so even though it's a stencil of a butterfly, you've got hundreds of variations on here. Uh, the same with the dragonfly. There's there's a, a shooting star and a spiral. There's, there's leaves and two little swans and a sw uh, signet. So that's what I use with that one. So even though we've only got this stencil, um, I've got quite a few. This little stencil here, which I use for my tiny um, A6 A Fobonichi, which again, I've taken the ring binders out. I, I thought would look good in um, for letters because this is going to be, this is all layout paper. And I think I've got 800 pages. I made this the other day. I've got 800 pages in this one. No, that's fine, Diane. You, that's fine. So again, I found these. Oh, that's my Easter card, which I want to keep in here. Um, I found a couple of prayer prayer things. I've got uh, one, a, another little thing from the Abbey. It's a bit smaller. I've got a credit card somewhere. Um, try not to just think that it's only one thing. Um, you can always get things from an, from somewhere else, if that makes any sense. So, again, I look at all the, the different variations I've got. Um, and that's what I was trying to explain to people is try to find things, trying to find things. I wanted to go downstairs and look through the kitchen. Um, this, and they're all over the place now because they've all fallen out. These are from... A jigsaw but that it's a 3d jigsaw that i bought my daughter but some of the some of the shapes are really really good my husband found me this one and again yes it does have that but it also has these shapes as well so you might find some of these about i don't know when i first started it 
that one is i love this and i can't find my original one i have this in an a3 and when i find it it will go in here and it has all the shapes on it and this is the one that started it because i made this fobonichi probably five or six years ago and i tried it as a fobonichi but i never had time to do it properly so it failed but I love the layout paper. And again, I use squares and I use the same layout paper that I've just used recently. It lasts for years. And I just doodle or draw. But this design is my design that I did when I was 16. And it's from a painting that I painted, again, as I was 16 going on 17, my first year in college. Um, and it was from a silk dress. So these are the shapes. In fact, I haven't got them all copied exactly right because this one's beautiful, this one. So I need to, I brought it, my daughter found it in the shed. It's a bit battered and it was a bit, a bit dirty. Um, but I brought it down so that I can, can trace over it. And I might even see if I can cut out because they're not going to be that difficult. So I might get some acetate and cut my own stencils. Um, I'd love to make a stamp of it. Uh, and I use that for Bible journaling as well. That's the one that I doodle in around with the Bible page. With, with my isograph, because this does not go through a Bible page and it doesn't go through this layout paper. It doesn't go through. It shows through, but it doesn't go through. So um, this is my kind of junk doodle but these are all the shapes because i only had the a5 um i think it's called a science i think it's a science one so it had like um they've all got this one isn't science this one's a, a line reader template but it has very similar shapes and i use these and i used to keep keep it in here because i made this little cover um, and then I would kind of doodle. And I did this last week, this. So that's what gave me the idea to do like a patchwork. So some things lead to other things. Um, and then we're messing about with lines. But I really like the fact that I only had a stencil, but I could still do this. And I colored it from my color book. Uh, this is the same stencil, but obviously use my, my doodle design. Um, again, you can see these shapes, but it's in an A5. This is a bit clumsy, this. Um, but I can't find my A5. But if you look at it, it's the same. So that's a little... Haven't got, no, we haven't got a little diamond, have we? No, we've only got a bigger one. Um, but this would be brilliant for the bullet journal because these look like little squares and things. And my daughters have given me these back. Um, I bought, I found some of these rotaring and um, standard graph, standard graph um, letters as well. So they have, again, they have a few little, um, let me find a white background. They have some shapes as well. So you can, there's a, there's a little heart there, two little hearts. So you can, you can use these and push them together and, and make doodles kind of thing. Uh, the same with this one, it's got a tick, it's got a smiley face, if I remember rightly, two eyes to make an eye, it's got a, a curvy mouth. Um, so all these symbols can be used. And it means there is a bit of con continuity, if that makes any sense. But um, I say, I hope I couldn't find that one, but he did find me this one. And then I said, no, it, it's it's a four size. So he found me this one. <laughs> now, this is the same as my other rotary, but it has holes in it. So, again, I've got circles and I've got some triangles um, and I've got the squares on my pages. So we can play about with that. Oh, is it called pin tangle? Well, I've called this square tangle. Oh, French curves and some crazy quilt. Yes, there's a little, a little triangle somewhere. Um, I've got 
go downstairs with all the sewing things. I used to sew as well and knit and crochet. And I've got the quilting. This is another little one, which I thought actually was quite sweet. And it would go in my uh, little Fobonichi. Uh, and I didn't know what it was, but it's got holes in it. But then it says it's a needle gauge. It's a knitting needle gauge. But that would be perfect to just sit on the page and then you've got some little circles if you wanted to doodle. You do need a fine pen for some of these, though. That The, the nicest thing is, uh, if you watch, I know it's a bit long, but if you watch the video I did earlier today, I made it from, um, I did this page today. Now, it took a while to draw it out. But I traced round this so it looked like um, that. And then I put it on the inside all the way round and I matched it up. It took, took a while, but I did it. And so I, I found that if I put that in the middle, I could have it on the inside, but then I did I did a boo boo. That's why I've coloured it in because I did a boo boo, um, and I coloured a few wrong squares in. So this one um, has got this filled in, but the other not. So I'll do that again and then fill the middle in. So even though I've only got one template and my letters, I can make quite a few different. See, that's the frame for that one. I can make quite a few different pages and that's the idea again this is my doodle so um and this particular Fobonichi and why I made it with two with 1200 pages was the fact that this is my positive creative Fobonichi um because while we're stuck inside this is going to be my page a day and again it took, took quite a few hours to do that but this is where we have the time. So what I'm hoping to do is to is to draw out quite a few pages. And then when we do get let out, <laughs> we can I can then say, right, the page is ready to colour. Because some of these take a while to draw. Um, but it's just quite nice to kind of have a doodle, a doodle one. So this is already done to colour. Um, I think I drew that one out. Say so that took quite a while, and then I coloured it. Coloured it. So it took about an hour and a bit to colour it, and it took about an hour to two hours to draw it because it, I do it very slowly. You could do it with a ruler and do it in an hour quite easily, but this is what I was saying to do for your children. If you've got children, while you're watching TV, if you get some squared paper, this did not cost me. Uh, probably cost me about a pound. Because I already had. Uh, should you be doing that, Alfie Cross? Um, this is some layout, uh, some squared paper. Um, I think I've got one that costs one pound ninety nine. There's enough there. This is my layout paper, which cost me twenty pounds, eighteen pounds. But I've still got tons left. It's it's in an A two size. It's because my desk. It's A2 size layout paper. They're about £20 to buy, but it's it's like the Japanese thin, gorgeous paper. Oh, um, Gina says, uh, some of the thin metal dies you can use to cut paper out, and it looks, they do look like that. This isn't a die, this is cardboard. Um, I think, I don't know if it's glue, I bought them to go in a photo frame. It said you can put them in and put photos in. I don't know if they were behind glass. I can't remember, but I do remember they are mirrored. And I think I got three different sizes for a pound from the pound shop a long time ago. The girls had thrown them out. They said, oh, we don't want that. My girl, daughter had thrown this out as well. I bought this because she used to like green. She's used it at school and now she doesn't want it anymore. So she's passed it back to me. And that's my perfect set for my Fobonichis. I've got lots of things in there. So I'm repurposing things rather than going out to buy things. I'm trying to repurpose things. Um, so yeah, look through your knitting things. Um, if you need a circle, um, 
I'm just going to have to tell that boy off. Alfie Cross, he's digging on the bed. Alfie, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Um, we've got pill pots that are round. Um, jam jar lids are the best ones. That's a bit monkey, but it's a jam jar lid. I'm going to get very cross with you. Um, oopsie. Got a nail polish circle. Jam jar lids are good because you can hold them down. I'm just trying to rescue this from. Don't you look at me like that, you rat bag. So I did take the ring binder. It's a two inch ring binder from my um, Covey. This is um, a Franklin Covey um, file folder, A5. Um, and I wanted something to, to hold my Fobonichi. Um, but then I managed to put, oh, it's sharp. I've got to take these off and tape the bottom. I've got a washi tape. I've got a washi tape ring. So I was dead chuffed with that because I don't have a lot of washi tape. So it works quite well. Obviously, you've got reams and reams. It doesn't. So this was my daughter's and she did it once. She did it once. Um, and then she didn't want it anymore and she lost a few pieces so of course we can't pass it on but just look at these shapes to draw on these are foam perfect for kids not if they're going to eat them um, but look at these they make little windows or this is a grid I like because they're round but they've got squares in the middle so that's really good three different sizes there's little wheels so these all shapes in here I can draw around um, and the idea is I've made a book out of next to nothing um, and repurposing. I'm sure children's spirographs are brilliant. Oh, thank you. I've had a lot of practice. Um, uh, the credit card shape is about somewhere you might see it. The idea was I didn't want people to go out and buy things because... Um, this is a time to look around what we've got and be, be creative. Um, and some people can't afford to go out and buy things. Um, and so my best make was this one. And again, I had this Schwarzky. Um, now, my, my cat's been chewing it downstairs. I hadn't realized, but I shall mend that. Um, and I took the ring binder out of this today. Um, and these were in um, one of these uh layout sets these these things here um but i've got these two for that i'm using the squares and again my fine pen and i've made a fobonichi um and i love it so this is my my daily fobonichi um that i'm going to be using um and i need again i need to put all these this information on all, all the pages but this is made out of the the cheap paper again the cheap square paper which was 199 and it goes in a ring binder that's why it's got holes in it but it doesn't bother me it's at the bottom i very rarely write at the bottom or you could put it at the top and put washi put it at the bottom and put washi um and i made it with one sheet of this there's, there's 20 there's 12 I can take this out because it's easy to get back in. I've got to take these out. I'm going to get Hubby to pull them out. This is the metal strip and it will look like this. Some have them in and some don't. Oh, I showed it in my previous video if anybody wants to know how to get the ring up, ring binder. I take this off in the previous video. I take the, the ring binder off. Um, and this is how I made it. The cardboard from the, the back of the A4 uh, layout paper. So it's just, a, and it was one ninety nine, I think. So it's the layout paper that I folded in half and then I did the copic stitch. And there is a video of me making this last week. And I wanted to make it out of things we had at home. So you could make it if you wanted out of just printer paper. <coughs> Sorry, Alfie's been a pain. Alfie, that's enough. So I was dead chuffed with that. 
so it has 12 signatures. Alfie, enough. Um, and I did make a cover for my other one, but I don't need it now because it's in it's in here. So just that's what. So you have a ring binder. I'll show you this really quickly. So you have a ring binder, and then behind here you have one of these, and that's how it fits together. So you've got to be careful; it's all sharp. But um, once you've pulled, so if I cut a hole in here I could pull this out because this is what's inside um, but I'm hoping that you see that one came out and that one didn't so I'm hoping that hubby can kind of poke this out or try and get it it's sharp so be careful um, but that's what holds the ring binder so once you've got that off you are left with this now, just at the moment, it doesn't bother me because the pages go to one side, but I could have um, a faux benici, and I've, I've been through all these um, 12 signatures, and I've got enough for nine months That because I've put tags in, so that's the last three months and there's six here. So I've got nine months, so a few more pages, which this will take, and I've got a year faux benici. And I've used um, the line paper, squared paper, beg your pardon, and I've used printer paper. Um, so I really like that one. Um, and again, use the cardboard because we don't want anything else. So that's gone in that one. And then you pull that out. My hands don't work particularly well. And I always wanted to use this, but knew I would never use it as an A5 Filofax um, ring binder. The other thing that was in here are these, and these are white, and there are 12. So if I put them in here I and re rename them, I've now got a white one to match, the um, a divider to match. So that looks quite nice. So again, I've repurposed these. I've not thrown them away. So the uh, highlighters, again, I bought quite a lot for my daughters and they didn't want them. Um, I've got six highlighters here, so I'm not going to use any more than these. But that's my little set to keep my faux Benici going. Yes, yeah, it's funny how one hobby interest leads to another and another. <laughs> it does. It certainly does. So this is my little box of goodies. Um, I've decided to use a couple of stamps and I haven't used this for years. I used to make my own books and I thought this had been dried up again five years. Um, it's a Tim Holtz vintage photo um, and I've actually used it because this is and I bought this as well. And it was quite expensive and I was cross with myself because I've never used it. And it's for junk journaling but of course I don't do junk journaling so that now works extremely well and saves me having to work quite small so I've made this is this is layout paper and I've got 800 pages of layout paper for my Fobinichi I've got a little wallet with some different squares to make the squares here to make them different. I've drawn on a sheet of this <coughs> as a template so that when I put it behind the layout paper, I've got a, um, a page of grid. Um, and I had a tear on that once so I had to mend it. But I used the stamp for the dates, I don't have to write so small. And I thought that would use my stamp up because I've never used it. So um, this is my Fobinichi, and which will probably come into more use when I start to plan. But at the moment, I'm not planning anything because I'm not doing anything apart from making things. So I'm trying to get organized and get kind of planner organized so that when, when we're let out, we can 
you can take these things with us and go to the park or go <coughs> go on day trips and take these with us and if, if i get all these not boring jobs but kind of mundane um sorry guys i just have to have a drink <coughs> i've had a terrible soft throat for three days fingers crossed fingers crossed because i'm i'm at high risk so that's why my bedroom looks like a bed sit i'm living in my bed sit at the moment i don't even go in the garden we've got a half acre field and i don't go in it um so <coughs> <coughs> the idea of putting all these dates on and drawing them out is that when it when when we do normal things again i don't have to spend two hours drawing it it's just a color so that's the idea of this is my creative positive planner for my time in confinement shall we say um so i am doing a page a day but then i'm trying to do an extra few as well but there is something quite nice but this took quite a few about three hours this did <coughs> and then i have um two pencil cases that's one um i have uh, another little pencil case somewhere and then all the rest oh there it is this is my bible journaling one and it has the bible pencils and the pen that doesn't go through bible pages a few stickers and um post-its and that is to go with the smaller planner so that will go with this one so that's got 800 pages so that's enough for there and then this has kind of got some things that i want to use so i've got some um uh note paper i've got some stamps some sticker stamps uh, bible journaling i've got some postcards i've got some sticker um lined post-its and i've got some thinner post-its they're going in that other one actually i've got one or two of those kicking about because i've been using them i quite like the scotch tape because it's it's black i put this in to repurpose it because i've used the paper um but this is quite hard backing so i may think about cutting it up and putting it at the back as a backing board so don't always throw things away the other thing that i could do although it'd be quite Oh, that's not so bad. It's with a uh, an awl or a pokey tool. I could use this as backing for a book if I did not want to put it in a binder. I've got extra pens that don't go through. I spent ages going through things, clips and a uh, pair of scissors. So this is kind of the bag that kind of goes with everything else. And I've got some clips if I need them. Um, and I have a little set of these. I bought about six of these. They're quite handy to have because if you do want to sit for an app with your Fobonichi, you can play and everything is kind of handy. So that's where we are at the minute. So I do love this. But this is in page. All that is how to do it on uh, the video previous to this one. Um, I did take the spine off this, this book. Whoops. That I made last week and the reason was I got extra space in here because it was quite stuffed this but now I've got space um I don't think I'll be using washi tape because that makes it thicker um but this is going to be my daily Fobonichi where I can put washi tape if I want to because this one can definitely double in size and if you notice that metal little thing has gone to one side because it wants to come out that little spike and the, the, there's one at that side as well so it's gone to one side as the spine it will actually pop in because that's all hand stitched so there is a gap but that can be really really fat and it's not going to bother me um so this is my daily fobonichi um a5 planner and that's my a6 and then i have my creative one which is the i wanted to make a big creative one while we're doing what we're doing for the uh, the next few weeks so that's why i've made those and again it took time to make this i stitched it uh, over last weekend 
not last week and the weekend before. So I watched two movies on the Saturday and two movies on the Sunday and I'd stitched it. So sorry about that, guys, and a bit of a rabbit trail. <clears throat> so if you were going to make this and you can get the kids to make these as well you'd have to stick the holes in the paper but they can stitch it if you do that you do need a bone a bone folder which i can't find a word of warning though really put these somewhere safe because they can be swallowed and they're very sharp these are the bits that fall off the back of here because i've done i've done three now so this is how I made my A5 book. Um, you need something that can make a, a lovely crease. And then I put about six pages inside each other. And then I'd start it again. And that's how I made that's how I made the signatures. And then you sew the signatures. But there is a couple of videos of how to do that. So I am doing this today because I do not want an A5 planner. <clears throat> so that's how to get the Fobonichi A5. If you want a Fobonichi for six, A6, you cut down there and you fold it. They're not going to be brilliant. The neater you are with your creases, the neater your book. So if you can get really crisp, really crisp lines, that's what you need. So this would make the signature for the A6. This would make the signature for A5. But I don't want to do that. So I want to cut down there. And the reason I want to do that is now I've obviously made quite a few of these because I've got I've put lines on my and if you notice, that's exactly where the crease is. So hold that down, straight down. And that's cut it that way. Sorry, guys. Speeding time at the zoo. So that's your A thingy size there. And the reason we've done that is because this will go in here. So that's our first page. It's our second page. And this is printer paper. You do not want to use any expensive paper we are making a page mine's lasted six or seven years because we're not doing this with it we're just doing that with it so it never tears never then we put the extra wet paper on top with the book. so we want to fill each one like this and if you've got your cut side put that at the bottom so you've got your nice neat side at the top so it looks neat really neat and tidy when you shut it it's nice and tidy the bottom you've got your cut sides so we'll go through this one and <clears throat> you've got to work out really though your page orientation Oops. before you cut there you go i didn't do that did i i forgot to put my finger on there this is quite an old one actually so but it, it's not going to bother me oh, i did two pages that's why it didn't like it i bought this second hand for a pound or something so I knew it wouldn't be brilliant. Oh, Alfie, be quiet. It doesn't matter that much because we're going to cover them with squares of colour. And that's where your extra wet strength comes in. You've got to have extra wet strength because 
the minute you wet the page it'll disintegrate and don't use watercolor paper because if you use watercolor paper color color will sink, sink into the paper and we want it to stay at the top a lot of activity outside sorry guys obviously everybody feeds their dogs at the same time so i've been stopping in uh, probably this is why i've got all this stuff <laughs> it's because i've been i've been in quarantine in my bedroom for uh probably about six weeks now i think um i do actually know what, what day it is which normally i don't <laughs> i don't know what day it is but i seem to know what day it is so i want one two three four Alfie Cross, be quiet. Put that away. So, sorry, guys. If he doesn't stop in a minute, I'll have to put the silent on because he's a pest. So, if you haven't got that, the edge of a scissor, the back of a spoon, anything to create a crisp. Alfie. So that was the. Oh, God, Alfie, shut up. I'll put you in a dustbin in a minute. You've been a pest all day. I will. <laughs> He's looking at me. No, you won't. No, you won't. He's just been naughty all day, guys. I'm really sorry. You may just have to put it on silent because he's a Whoa. pest. If you have one of those, please be careful. So we'll go back to here. So I put paper chase at the back there. Oh gosh, we've got woo woo girl downstairs. She's from Romania. <laughs> She's a woo woo girl. Sorry, guys. I may have to let him downstairs because my daughter's got a job in a care home and she's just obviously just come home. So I've been using my hands most of today, so they don't work really well. This is a lot easier than I'm making it look, but my hands are really bad today. Um, partly because I did pull out that um, ring binder, which I shouldn't have done. So, so you can make one of these for your children or I always say make one for a present for somebody. Again, now is the time to do these mundane things because one thing we do have is time and these would be wonderful for the summer or for a present for somebody um, that you don't want to give. Um, I think I've got another one. No, that's it. And then I've got one at the back. I'm going to use that last one. Nope, wrong way. That's it. And then I should have one spare. I'm going to have to let him down. Alfie, you're just a bad girl, boy. Right. She woo woos. She's from Romania and she woo woos. She doesn't bark, she woo woos. <laughs> It's a bit weird, but she will lose. So because it was supposed to have photographs in it and we've only put one layer in one side, we can put another layer on top because we're not putting a photograph in this one. Now, it depends on your stash and what you've got. Um, but I put this was my first one. So I've decided that I like this size. Oopsie, have a lunch. I like this size square. So I've got my Neos, so you could, um, but again, the page itself, um, 
Now I've cut mine because I'm greedy. I want to get a thousand in here. So I've got 10,000 colors. So I'm getting there. So I've cut mine, but without cutting them, this is the better system. Alpha, you are going to be in the doghouse. So what we need to do now is we need to open this. You can do it two ways. I didn't think the pages would last long. So that's why my original one had thinner pages. My original one had little squares so that you could pull them off and replace them as and when. Because obviously some colours you're going to use more than other colours. But the extra wet strength paper means it doesn't matter how many times you do it it's going to last a long time so you can do this i thought i'd cut myself with that you can do this two ways and the easiest way if she could find her scissors i've got a spoon is Again, this was 99p, so they're not very expensive, these extra wet strength. Ow, ow, stuck my finger in that like an idiot. So my hands are not working at the minute because, so I do have a staple remover somewhere but it's like everything it's all downstairs i made myself a fake or a faux scrap box um but the conservatory is too warm and then i've been trapped upstairs so um i can't possibly get it upstairs so it will be going probably in an outside studio so this is extra wet strength so it means you can do a bit of a watercolor on it and you can use it a bit you can use it quite uh, you know don't worry about going through and you don't this is a very old photograph because that's my phone <laughs> it's my first phone um i used to draw holding things if you can't find anything to draw and you want to practice Put a pen in your hand, put a spoon in your hand, hold something and draw it. And if you're right handed, left handed, do that. You've always got something to draw. And once you've mastered drawing your hands, you can probably draw lots of things. So this extra wet strength, the sea white of Brighton, is the best. Um, but as long as it says extra wet strength, it's been sized it's been coated so it's allowing a little bit of watercolor to go in but all the color normally sits on top if you use watercolor paper the colors will the colors will dry in now i've done this because that's that's fine all this is color and it'll be the touch and go system so but here the water's soaked in if i have done if i do the pencil and then wet it it'll all soak in and you won't have it so it works with this this is the postcards because i didn't want them to bend if they bend once they're dry they will crack and they will fall off so i've purposely used stiffer card than i did last year but last year but this i did quite a few years ago and they're still fine again touch and go system and there are professional watercolours, so they're going to be a lot of colour from those. So you can do this two ways. We have one sheet here. I can cut it again in half and it will give me those colours. Um, I do have a ruler. And I actually was thinking, I did have the little triangle. I think it fell down there, didn't it? See, this is from quilting. So... I've got a square and a rectangle and what you can do with that is I pull the pencil out is you can put that if it's square and you can scratch it I mean you don't need to do squares it's up to you but you can use this as a template now how I did it was I drew the squares and I gridded also the the, the naming of it because you need 
you need to put the name of it and you also need a color guide because when you look at the end of your ink tents, especially these here, you are not gonna know what it's gonna do. Um, so it gives you about 10 shades. So even though there's only one square there, we've got 10 shades of that color and that's without mixing them. That's just touch and go system. Um, so the Dermot watercolor pencils, again, it, you know, you've, I've got this square here I can revamp it. So once you've used it, but if you use watercolor paper, you can't do that. So um, that's a Swiss color. I've got a 44, 44 water green, 44 water green. So where I've used the color, I can scratch again. And then when you see dust, you know, you've, you can't do any more. And what I used to do with this is do that, that way, then that way, and then that way back again. And you can see a bit of dust coming now. So that means that whole page is saturated with color. If you can see that. So that's now full of colour and the pencil can go away. And with my original book of 6,000, you couldn't get all these on your desk. You'd have to have a complete desk surrounding you because the 72 pencils, Derwent tins, which you can never see them all at the same time anyway. The 72 ink tins, 24 um, Derwent graphy tint I think it's about 120 uh near color twos and again the near color twos you get the color out which happened to be really handy which is unusual for me I put them in these Derwent these are for the art bars now we might have art bars in here oh no we haven't we've got the neos I never use them I haven't used them for yonks because I use this but let's have a look We've got uh, chrome, oh, did the olive light, two, four, five. Um, olive light, let's put it down here. Sorry about the noise, guys. Um, that one. These just sit on top. I, I was trying to push them in between, but they sit on top. Um, but it keeps them nice. So we've got... Um, chrome green which is the bottom one and it's 212 the number so I know I can scribble on here and this is because it's extra wet sketchbook paper and I can scribble like that and then I can scribble like that And I've used a little flat, little flat edge there. But look at all that colour I've got. Now these can go back, so you can take this to the to the seaside. This can go back in there and be put away again. Um, there's the green. I presume that one is light, light olive. That one's light olive. So again, and this again is another job to do. So you could make this little book for somebody in a care home or somebody in hospital or for your children. If you don't want them to play with your neos, you know, you can do this. And I mean, my daughter's 23, I think she's um, she's 22 in May. And I'm going to make her one of these books. Um, because she has just finished her, uh, she was hoping to go to Camp America, but when her fingers crossed, we're not, we're not jinxing it. Um, she's paid and she has a place, but we'll see what happens. Because she's um, done animation and illustration, but she makes things out of rubbish. So that's um, what have I got next? I've got two two five um, mid green. 
she makes things from recycled plastic and she makes puppets and all sorts of things and she also does uh 225 is the bottom one i think no 225 is the top one there you go oops <coughs> So I've done that. And she also, she wants to work with, um, she's gone for the disabled children because she wants to do easy projects for them to make. So she's she's doing lots of things at the minute. Um, so that's how you revamp it if you haven't already made it. Um, so, and I never had a safe place for my Neos because I didn't buy them all at once. I just bought them in separate things. So I've got three of these, and I think I picked these up for a pound, but I don't know if they still make them or not. But they are they are for the Derwin art bars. And again, I haven't got the Derwin art bars in there. They're a little bit crumblier, but the colours are just out of this world, and they kind of blow the socks off Neos. So um, I need to revamp all mine. But again, that's a job to do while watching TV is to revamp my Neos. Um, I've got my Peerless, which again, I did put in separate little ones because of course I've used a lot more of some than others. Um, I've got the Swiss ones, which you've just seen, which I think I'm going to give to my daughter, then I don't have to draw them out because it does hurt your hands. Um, my Gansai Tambi watercolour, every time I got the damn things out, they were all over the floor. So I did some puddles of colour. I did this about six years ago and then and then the company brought them out. So they do little puddles like this, but you can make them. But I coloured 36 colour pages by not washing the brush out in the water. So um, tight Yorkshire lass. And then I've just filled it up to see how thick it's going to be. Um, but this is the 100. It holds 100 I've torn the thing off now, but it does hold a hundred. It's a paper chase, they're three pound fifty. It holds a hundred photographs, but what I've done is I've cut it. So instead of putting a photograph in one here, look, and um, get one. So what you do is you get a photograph and you put it in here, and then you get another photograph and you put it in in there. So you've got photograph and you've got a piece of plastic there and then you've got photograph so you but what i've done because this is this is loose this one this is loose if you can see that if you can see that guys that plastic in the middle is loose so if you cut down there and cut down there that gives you three pieces now you know the difference because that's thin that's the middle one it's thicker and then that one's thin so originally they would be joined and you'd put a photograph in there and a photograph in there um but i've cut that not very well you can see and then i've sliced it across the top and that's doubled mine Um, but it depends how greedy you want to be. But I am going for 10,000. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Right. So back to our pages. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I've got 26 pages I can fill with colour. So I'll make a note on a scruffy piece of photocopy paper, 26. <clears throat> so 
So I've got 26 pages. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, I know that these do not go through my colour pages. I would also think that the Swiss Karandak, the Swiss uh, colours and the, um, I don't know what you call them, <clears throat> the Prismalo watercolours and the Swiss Karandak watercolours probably won't go through there either so we could put i need 12 i don't want to put the ink tents or the neos because they're going to go through the pages and i don't want them to so i can do one of two things i can have bigger squares or i can put um these colors in as well so a water-based pencil is normally okay but test it first um the other thing to do is i do love my derwent watercolor pencils um i also think there is enough colors here but what i could do is put a yellow next to a green oh sorry i've got an ink tense again i do that every time this is why I am I, I ruin my Bible pages because I flip too far. So I've got enough greys, uh, but I could put these two together. So I could put a small square of this colour and a small square of that colour. And I could then mix the two on the paper very carefully because we can do the paper palettes because we've done it before. You get some, you get a lot of colour from a paper palette. So, um, what colours have we got here? <clears throat> so I've got a Derwent Prussian blue and a Derwent mineral green. So I could do a bit of a square of that one, obviously a bigger size. And again, three layers is about right. And then I can do a layer of this one. And then I'll put those back because I do need them in order. Because the others are not in colour order and they drive you nuts my watercolour brush so this is the touch and go system so imagine this little square in here and I'm just going to do this and I've got a beautiful colour now we do have 72 colours um, but if you watch these just it all comes off look watch it will melt these are professional watercolours they will melt and they'll always move because it's a watercolour. So I can let that dry and then I can move it again. So I love the fact that I could possibly make that colour. Now I've probably got that colour but I might not. No, I've got a dark one. So I kind of like that colour. So you can do that with colours. Um, be more difficult to, if you're mixing the two, I suppose you could mix it and then let it dry. And then it becomes a blob. But you see, we are, we are scrubbing and rushing. It's not going to go through. Um, but I do like some of those colours so, but I use them like 
that anyway when I use them as a pencil but I, didn't, I wouldn't want to use them that strong because obviously this is what we're using for the Fobonichi and the Bible pages so we've got to think so the other thing to do is we do need 12 um, so we could make the squares and then fit them together so if we needed 12 we could double but then I like the fact that I've got these colors on here they are not in color order though because I realized that these that was a straw one it might be better down here so I done it again no I'm just looking for what color that is I don't know what color that one is uh, again there's a chocolate color as well so I like these warm browns and then we've got some olive so you can look at the colors and see what goes together so we've got some, that bronze probably might go with the browns and the pale blues and the turquoises i don't know why i didn't put them in order i have no idea why i mi mi messed the order up no idea why i switched them around but they are definitely not in color order um I suppose if we had three on one and three on the other, then these colors would stay opposite each other. So you'd have six yellows, six oranges, six reds. So I might think about that to do them in a strip across. Um, that might work. Um, and I would have 24. So I'd want two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I've done it again. Do it every time. Two, four. And I've got 26. So I think I'm going to split and do mine in, in threes. So I'm going to have, when you opened it like this, it was like that. I'm going to have uh, three yellows there and three yellows there but obviously if you've got more colors or less colors this is what you have to do now you have to sort this now before you start because once you've done it it's kind of done and it'll last you for years and you won't want to redo it so you've got to kind of have this bit of working out first um, uh, and that's that's what is thinking see I, I I kind of like that so I think I'm going to make some strips and then I'm going to color them and I'm going to name them first as soon as you've done it you've got to name them because you forget and I have my my very fine pen um so that's what I'm going to do first is make my strips and then I will be, I'll leave that one and I'll leave that one and that leaves me 24. So that's perfect. So it means my colours will be opposite each other and they'll have some, some kind of, so that one, no, that won't work. Now you see I've worked that out wrong because I won't see that page because of this. So I might just have to rethink. I might have to rethink. Can't cut it because it's the wrong way around, you see. So I like the fact I can see those rather than having just three on that page and three. so you see I'd have to get rid of that one in order for it to work the only other thing to do would be to put this in here with sellotape because then that one would be in there but this one this one would be in there 
So we've got colour and colour. Flip it over and stick this one there. See, I can't cut this because it's it's opened at the middle. Unless I cut it and moved it down. I could cut it and move it down. Let me have a quick think. Mm, that's changed my mind. Now somewhere... Cut this one open. So this one, if I put a page here with colour on it, and I put a page here with colour on it, I'd see both colours. I'd see the six yellows. I think I like that. I do like to see all the colours together because sometimes you look at a yellow and think, I want that one, but actually I like that one better. So it works as a visual, a visual aid as well. So I would probably have to make these a bit smaller. But I've already cut this one um, and this one would sit quite nicely. So now we have to count the pages. <clears throat> So we've got two, four, five. Yeah, because we've got that one in between as well, you see. We've got this space in between where we would have to put a page. So when that was open, I'd leave that one. So we've got page, colour, plastic, plastic, cover, plastic, page. Mm -hmm. And I would have three strips of colour. So let's just have a look. So it's not always as easy oops, as it looks. And that's the wrong ruler. I need this one. So, so that's five and a half. So we've got to got to really think. Again, this is the fiddly bit. This is where you've got to work it out. So five and a half. So that's the middle. So we could go five and a half. We could go an inch and a half. And we could go an inch and a half and that's two inches again this is this is where the fiddling is <laughs> this is where you've kind of got to have a good a good play and I've cut all those pieces of paper now but that's fine because I shall I don't know what I'm going to do with this one Mm. 
so that would work but then that one wouldn't the only other way to do it is to stick it is to stick it there and then it would work yeah i think i like this this one so that would work um and then i've got quite a nice edge to put the colors in but i don't really need that for the colors so we've got three colors there um so they would be six yellows plastic again what a faff guys but this is what you've got to do to iron out to iron out what you want to do i don't need double-sided but i'm gonna because i've cut them i shall do that but i'll leave the edge out i'll leave the edge out so that's so instead of tucking them in i'm just going to stick them at the edge because then because that works for me if it doesn't bother you the fact you can't see all your colors at the same time that's fine it's just that i know making two what i like and this really works for me so i've got um i've got color plastic so here would be all the darks at the back so i'd have the um there i'd have the darks and then on this side i'd have the browns and the pale browns i could have the blacks and the darks and then we've got pale greens and dark greens and you've got um turquoise greens and turquoise browns because there's two um the olives could go with that one, the obscure one. So we've got pale light and things and then do it that way. So again, sometimes it doesn't always work as you think it's going to do because um, I originally doubled everything inside it. So it worked for me. But of course, then I've realized I don't want to double it now. I just want to put 24 in, uh, whereas before I put a lot more. So that I'm going to put in there. So I'm going to put the, the outside edge in there because that will make this page a bit stronger. And that's a really neat edge as well then. So we've got a neat edge there. And then I can always put... Um, that one there and we can see the edges here so i'm going to put i could label them and put yellows blues greens instead of flipping but i kind of like flipping there's not many pages to flip so right but you could label them if you wanted and again that's the beauty of this system so again you've got to have a real good think about it this is the important thing because there's no point in me making it and thinking oh i've done it wrong and uh, so i can now see um so if i put color here and i put those there um i've got all the reds And that's what I mean. Whereas if I had them like this, I'd have reds there and then I'd have reds there. So I can't see a full length of colour. And that really works for me. Again, I've got the purples with the blues, the plastic in between. That one, plastic, that one. And I love, I so love this book, but I cannot use it when i'm bible journaling because i go over 
onto the ink tenth. Um, and I want it to go in my Fibonacci, so it's it's thinner. So that's why I'm making this. Uh, so this is just for me, and it's just for the Fibonacci and the Bible journal pages. So I can stick a bit of sticky tape in there. It's nice to get everything neat and tidy because that it's going the the neater you make it now, the nicer it's going to look. So I can either stick it to this bit here. Or I can stick it to this bit. I think I'm going to stick it to this bit. And sellotape would be fine. I don't need anything expensive. Um, sellotape's fine because sellotape sticking to plastic is really nice. It behaves itself very well when you find your sellotape had it out today somewhere I purposely didn't put it on there but it, it could be anywhere um i don't know if anybody else finds this but when i'm when you're streaming it looks like a a party has been going on when you everything's everywhere and you can't find anything <laughs> and you can't find anything because i do so many different streams about different things um I don't really want double sided and it's just, and it's just boring sellotape, clear little sellotape. Oh, and I can find hundreds of these. Use this. I don't really want to use this for two reasons. One is it's too wide. I found five layers of that. <laughs> don't want five layers. But I do have all my. Oh, that's the cutter gone. Tell a lie, I don't have. All my jars. I don't have all my tapes. Quite a few of these, so I better use some of these. This is Scotch tape, but that's a cheapy one, I think. I'm so cross because I have a bit of salad oh, it's here. Look. Didn't use it as a circle because it's not completely round. Right. So I can put this one in, and if I line it up with the edge, um, I can put that in. What I'm going to do first of all is take them all out first. So they're all the right way around, which is a fine job as long as they're all the right way around. And I can crease them and make them sit really nice. There we go. So I have a bit of a conveyor belt going on and I'll get rid of this for the minute because I don't need I don't need my extra wet strength paper yet. I need it when I'm doing the colours. The reason I've done that is I can see this line now. So it opens at that end. Put it there. You can either do it this way, whichever's the more comfort. You've got to be comfortable. It's got to be in the right place because the sellotape does not like to be moved. So gosh, 
gosh, this is really old stuff, this. But this will be fine. It will work absolutely perfectly. And we will put that one. Nope, I don't want to do that. I need to put I do have a small pair of scissors, I do have a little cutter actually careful with this because it's not user friendly. Really. stick the other and of course he's decided not to do that the next thing to do if I don't need to do that at all oh, I've got to cut this off it looks horrible use most of this I think I'll use quite a lot of it no. first little bit I'm just going to put in here Again, it's fiddly, but we want to put that into there and to stick it to there, which it is doing. And then very carefully trim it off. Watch your fingers. I, I don't like this thing, but I can't find my other one. And the neater you make it now, the better. So that's in that side, and it, but it, it does flap. And that's what we want. So now we want the other one. Put that one in. It's better to actually put it in the actual crease. Line it up. you've got to get it where you want it because it 
it's going to be in there for a while. And I remember before getting a couple of wonky pages thinking, ah, for goodness sake. So you do need to get it as you like it now. Either trim it as you go along or so that's another page and again it's got to flip because we are flipping so we want it that way and then flat that way there is an art in doing this and you've got to get it right because if you don't you won't be able to flip because it'll stick up like that all the time so you do need to get this right so that it will lie flat. Because we want it to lie flat and it's got the colour on it. So again, do that. I'll probably get the scissors and just trim up to that when I finished. So You've got to be organised. You've got to have a think about it. And even though I've made three, I hadn't really thought about where they were going because and that's going right in there. That so. Making books is never dead easy. It's always trial and error, and you you might want to clip it. We could put it in there. We could put it where we want it, and then clip it. Hold it in place with two magnets or something. But um, I'm a bit of a suck it and see girl. I just kind of say, oh no, I can't be bothered with doing that. It's like measuring. I'm not a very good measurer either. So now you might find something better to stick it with, but I always think sellotape, sellotape on plastic is good. Because if you make a mistake, you can bring it back out and you can get it exactly where you want it. Now, I suppose I could in a single page, a single paper, but it'll be fine. It'll do what I want it to do. So that's fine. I want it to flip and it will flip. I've used different uh, different layouts. Um, oops. Oh, come on. You can put the solid tip down first. You can do whichever works first. You're not going to see this because it's going to be covered with a piece of extra wet strength paper, which in turn will be covered in colour. I don't think I like that. That's going to drive me potty. But there's nothing else in there, so it'll be okay. I might have to put a bit of double-sided sticky tape in there. It'll be fine. It, it's doubled the, the thickness of it, really. So, flip over. So, again. 
everything needs a crease as a memory. But for a bit of photocopy paper, a photo album and a bit of sellotape, it's going to be fine. Maybe that would be better using it that way. I think before I've made this actual sellotape. Actual sort of take page, I think, for today. So, really, you didn't need to double the page. All I've done is add bulk. You can make these as neat and tidy as you want. Um, the idea is they do what we want them to do. Which we need them to do is to fold. old is this now? I've got one of these silly splits on it. This is going to take time. So that's basically what we do and we can then, I prefer to cut it with a neaten that up a bit later so basically we've got page plastic page plastic page plastic page plastic and that's what we want for our color pages so I can cut these down with my cutter now. Um, I can either cut them down. Now, one thing is, it's easier to colour them when they are not cut down. I can tell you that. If you cut them all into little squares, it will be impossible because as soon as you go backwards with the crayon or the pencil, you pick up the edge and it becomes buckled. So it's so much easier to do it like this. Um, and I think that's what these marks are. I'm pretty sure that's what these marks are. So I'm going to leave mine, I think, as a page. I'm just going to um, just 
do the one and then we can and I do know where this one is because that's where the line is It's done that. It's a bit strange. So it's been long-winded, but again, it shows that you can get, you can get um, it's definitely that one, isn't it? It's that. <clears throat> what happens when you make too many? So remember, this is extra wet sketchbook paper and this is going to be used to put the colour on so this is the top so basically um, I have stuck these in have I stuck the neos in oopsie I haven't stuck the neos in so I'm going to use the neos as a template so you could probably cut all your pages to start with. Oh, there are my photocopy papers, which I'm going to put in the bottom of there. <laughs> ah, there we go. So this is extra wet sketchbook paper. And some of mine aren't perfect. I'm going to use my really fine pencil and make a mark there and make a mark there and make a mark there and there so I'm not sure which side it matters really I don't think it does so let's not straight for goodness sake has it Well, follow the gut instinct. I'm lining that up rather than that up because my lines are skewered. And then can't measure for toffee so um, I kind of play it by ear I really can't measure for toffee um, I measure, measure these originally and then it's a case of a okay then it, it'll just have to do so basically that's given me uh, it's given me I've, I've only got one there, so what I'm going to do with this one is, because I have a very fine pencil, I'm going to chop that in half. So I've got, I can label, because this, this, I get confused with. So now I've got a label for that one and a label for this one, a colour swatch and a colour swatch. And I will be... I do have the numbers on there, so when I do this, I can transfer them across, oops, transfer them across as long as they are level that way. Uh, 
and then we do the same at this side. It's a bit of a wonky line, but whoops, <laughs> it's a terrible wonky line. And do the same at this side. But it only works if they're like a deck of cards. And then, of course, I can't draw sideways for Toffee. go and in theory we have lots of lines which we line up and again this is probably better with a smaller ruler because when you're messing about with a big one it's this is a bit of a small ru ruler so it's a bit easier to do These lines are out as well. Just can't do lines for toffee. All my lines must be out then. So if I do that one, that one. So I need to move out this one. Oh my goodness. Both these two middle ones. I don't know how that works. Just can't do with this at all. Um, let me see if I can do it a better way. I just cannot be doing with this at all. I don't have the patience since I had the the bit of a car crash. I do not have the patience to do anything, let alone faff about measuring things. <laughs> I suppose you should do. If I had a proper measure, then I'd know what it is, but 
I don't, so. I just want to scribble some squares on, I don't want to. How wide this is? It's four, so that's got to be 12. And it's 14, so that doesn't work. So that is just short two inches, just short two inches, just short two inches. I didn't think that I'd moved it particularly. It's something to do with physics, but I can't work it out, so... Right, so that's the one I'm going by because I just can't be do with fiddling about. I just don't have the patience to do that. <laughs> so that's what you do. Then you scribble your colour on and there you have it. And that's taken me two hours, which could have taken me probably an hour to make the whole thing. I think it was the middle bit that I... I rejiggled and shouldn't have done really. Um, does not want to go in there. I'll pop it back where it goes. So thanks for watching. Um, and I have a pleasant afternoon. I think I might just not speed this video up. I think because it's a bit of a pain. Um, there's a lot of videos of how I made this, some of my first, my first videos of how to make it. Um, it's just because this is a bit awkward and I haven't worked it out beforehand. So it's kind of, but it, it, it'll be fine when it's done. Got sticky glue everywhere now as well. <laughs> so thanks guys. Have a lovely afternoon.